this is going to be the drive um, motor for this wheelbarrow. Um, really pleased with it actually. Had to, I've already made a slight modification to it. Inside here, there's an electronic brake, and it's on by default, and we don't need it for this. Um, so I've taken that out the back. There's two wires, and I basically just cut them and tape them up. There's a limit switch here that I don't need, and this extra auxiliary wire to operate, basically to control the electronic brake. So when it's, I don't know, when it's in one way, it will basically lock the motor up, and then the, the wheel uh, chair won't move. Um, but on this, I don't care about that. So, um, so I'm taking the limit switch off on this auxiliary wire, and I'm just going to keep it simple. Just two wire and reverse polarity to spin the motor in the other direction, job done. Right, so this lever here is a new, it, it sort of sticks it into neutral, so um, the motor's obviously, the gearbox is engaged, stick it on there and you get free wheel. And I'm thinking actually that would be quite useful to keep. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, because this motor's going to be sitting flush on a, on the deck, or sort of the underside of the, um, the barrow. Um, so I'm not sure whether what I'm going to do. I mean, it potentially could be I just cut a hole in the sheet that this is going to sit on, and then this pokes through, and I cut the lever short, and then I've got a sort of I sort of got the option to free wheel. So maybe if the battery goes flat, and I'm I'm sort of I've got to push it myself the old-fashioned way, then this might just be the way that allows me to do it. Because otherwise, without that, it is going nowhere until I charge the battery up. So useful feature. Hoping to keep it. Right, so time to try this out. Um, so these are the bits I've got. So I've got a speed controller, tenner off of eBay. Um, I don't know how good this is going to be. Certainly, long time, a long term, or, or you know, durable wise or durability wise, it's probably going to be. I don't know. I don't suppose it's going to rate. It's rated for 500 watts at 24 volt, which I think is about 20 amp. Um, and that I'm not convinced it's something it would do all day long, um, but we'll see. Uh, I've also I've hooked up an amp meter to it because I'm keen to know what this motor draws both on the load and without load. Um, because I'm obviously I've sized this battery to actually be 20 amp, um, but I I sort of hope that it doesn't need to be on its limit any more than the speed um, the speed controller does. Uh, so that's to be determined. Um, I've also got, I bought this off of eBay as well, which is a rather useful little thumb throttle. Um, it's got a, a voltage meter on it, so I'm thinking this can go on the handle of the um, wheelbarrow. And I've got my on-off switch, and I've got the, I've got the, um, well, the controller for getting the motor to turn. So we'll see if it does work. I've put a 15 amp fuse in the line because I also want to see whether it. I'd quite like to have a, a smaller fuse than necessary just to see just just to sort of belt and braces kind of effect on it to make sure it doesn't actually just about um, I think the figure at the top right oh, sorry the top left is what we'll be looking at uh, so I've cut the wires off the end uh, I've got another connector that um, that will f actually match the back or the um, the motor connector is on there um, I'm just gonna have to hold this I think for a moment again it doesn't matter which way around these wires go because um, it does reverse I'll show you that in a minute so let's just flick it on so we've got 28 volt and we have so there we go full chat we're doing about well, between we went up to six, and it's gone back down to four amps. So that's really good. That's sort of quite safe, and you can feel the torque in it just by just the way the motor's sort of rocking there. So it's going to need good anchorage to the bottom of this wheelbarrow, I think. Um, so that's good. And just by flicking those around, this should go in reverse just as happily as it goes forward. And it does. So yeah. So. That's pretty good. Um, the off switch works as well. So great. That's a good start. Everything's heading in the right direction. Let me enlighten you as to my plan and how this is all going to fit on the wheelbarrow.
Right, so here's our motor. Um, what we're going to have is this is going to be mounted on here, and I think it's all, I want to keep this motor as close to the wheel as possible, just so I can keep the weight slung forward enough as much over the wheel rather than having to lift it with a handle. Um, so it's going to go somewhere along here, like this, and this wheel is going to get replaced with this steel one because I can then either screw it, um, pin it or weld it to the shaft and I'm going to take, cut these off and replace that with these bearing blocks. Um, which I think will make, because at the moment this is there's a little bit of a wobble there. Um, so on the shaft I'll mount the smaller sprocket, like so. Bit of chain around it, mount a battery, a couple of other little bits and we're good to go. So it's another day, um, in fact it's a horrific day, it's on the point of raining at any second and it's blowing a gale so if you can, if you struggle to hear me I do apologise. Um, yesterday I lost a bit of footage, it was only a little bit, but it was of me cutting the wheel bracket off this wheelbarrow um, and I also took the plastic uh, sort of wheel and discarded it and actually put the, the tyre on the metal one that I've got so that I've got something I can weld the shaft to. Uh, so today really is about welding on the um, bearing hub, uh, the, the, uh, the bearing and the axle and from there I can then work out where to mount the motor. So that's what it is and uh, before it next rains I'm going to crack on. Right so simply put, here's the um, block, bearing block, and these, so we'll weld these onto the plate and then hopefully these just go like that and then I can just bolt them down. Right, so back out to the assembly area. Uh, as you can see, that's the sort of plan um, for how I want it to sit. Now they're obviously going to, they're not, because the, the two sort of support arms are not obviously parallel, there's going to be this a bit of an overhang on the inner and outer side, but you know, I'm not really that fussed about that. Um, what there is is enough room to get the sprocket here so that it can meet the arm on the motor. That looks good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack these in place so I've got something to work from and then I can focus on how we mount the, uh, the motor itself. Right, so fast forward about half an hour, and I'm now thinking about this bracket. I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous um, parts of this video uh, that I wanted the 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 motor 
uh, to be on a slider so that I can actually adjust the chain tension and indeed if I so choose to alter the size of one of the sprockets that there's enough movement to take up this sort of slack. Now there is movement with this, there's not a huge amount but I think there's probably enough what I need. Now six bolts is probably overkill on this application anyway. So if I did, for instance, want a longer chain, then I could remove the two back bolts and then basically this, this would have a whole lot more room to move. Um, and the same if I wanted to take the chain, make it smaller, I could just take those out and shunt the motor up. So that's where I'm going so far. This is still experimental. I don't know if this is going to make it to the, to the end uh, design, but... Um, so this is the bottom of the motor and then obviously this is the frame to actually bolt it or, or weld it to the uh, to the wheelbarrow. So I'm thinking something like this and then this bit here would span the two rails that come alongside and then I'd have another one that went this way. So essentially it will be welded on three parts so it won't be welded on the fourth part because this part here would be in the way um, it basically, we, I couldn't, I couldn't actually get it through. So, I think I'm going to leave it with three and see how how it is. I think it will be more than strong enough, but we'll again, we're going to have to suck it and see on this one. So I've, um, I've taken a break from the mounting of the motor now. I'm happy as things are but I don't think I can realistically do any more with it until the sprocket for the um, the axle turns up. Once that turns up I can actually put a chain on it and actually fine tune it and confirm that it works okay and then I can weld it on. So there's plenty of other things to do. Um, this one here is a plate that I was going to uh, to put up behind the motor to mount the speed controller and the battery. Um, I've measured the distance or where the um, the the part, basically where the wheelbarrow side um, frame goes, and I've just got to cut these out, and then that's another job done. Right, so the idea is that this plate goes somewhere like that, and we stick the battery somewhere along here. I think. I'm not decided whether I'll put it up right or I'll put it down. Um, I'm inclined to want to put it flat only because it's less to hit it. It's out the way more. Um, so I'm probably going to put it like that. I mean, ideally, if you were looking at it, take the safety aspect out of it, you'd probably put it here because um, it's closer to the wheel and less weight on the handles. But it's just too exposed there, and I think. I don't really want to risk bashing it. I'm not. I'm going to put a cover around it, but even so, I think I'd rather rather it was somewhere like here. Um, so I think that's probably where I'm going to go. Yeah, something like that. And then I think the speed controller, because it's not very big, you go there, and it's pretty much pretty much there then. Right, so next up, the thumb throttle, which is going to go here. Uh, this tube is too big for this, so my proposal is this piece. Lovely. So I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to push this bar up as far as I can, and then bolt it here, and pop the end back on, because it slides up the end quite well on this. So 
and then this will sandwich in between. That's the plan. And then whilst I've got the wheel around this way, um, I've also got to put the switch here for reverse. So I'm going to weld a little bracket on the side here for that. Not pretty, but effective, I think. So we've got the right hand handle um, sorted. I'm happy with how that's turned out. And we mustn't neglect the left hand, which does have one purpose um, in this build, and that is to control the forward and reverse. So I've made up a little bit of a bracket out of some leftover three mil sheet steel and all I'm going to do is weld that onto there. That will conclude everything we need to do on the left hand handle. Right, so this is a mock-up of where I think things are going to go. Uh, I think, can't see any reason why I'm going to need to change it, but I'm not making anything bolted, I'm not bolting anything down until I've wired it and convinced myself that, yeah, it's perfectly okay there and it's not going to foul anything. Uh, so, turning my attention to wiring, because this speed controller, I've probably mentioned, I'm sure I mentioned it in an earlier video earlier in this one, uh, it doesn't have a reverse, which is really frustrating, but you can't blame it for being £10. It's not, you know, I can't expect it to be really. So I've got to make the own one, and that's why I've got a reverse polarity switch. Uh, the, it's a 20 amp switch, and so it should handle any current that we're going to throw at it. Uh, and it's not going to be switched during load, so I can't see it being a problem. But it does mean I've got to run two fairly hefty cables up the length of the uh, wheelbarrow arm, which is a bit of a pain, uh, especially as this is, if we remember, a budget, and at the moment I'm still about 100 quid, I'm still in the right side of it, uh, so I'm going to, I've scrounged around for some wire of a, a reasonable gauge to take the load, and I've got one piece here. Uh, which is great, but I'm going to get a bit unorthodox with the next with the other part. So I'm basically going to take the wire for the uh, the motor is going to go up, and obviously we've got on the way back we've got one for the, basically the output the speed controller. So I've got to run four fairly hefty wires. So I've got another wire that's red and keeping with the right colour scheme. But the the, the negative I'm going to have to use this stuff. It is although it looks like speaker cable, it is actually power cable, and it's way both, all of these are way over what I'm going to need. Um, as long as I can get them in and out the holes that I've drilled, that's the, uh, the interesting bit. Right, so I let the battle commence. So we've done it. Now, it's not been totally casualty free. I've had damage some of the insulation here. However, I've got more than enough that end. So I'm probably going to terminate somewhere, um, and then I'm going to wrap them. Uh, I'm not sure what yet because obviously the, the where I've drilled them out is really sharp. So um, I'll just take care of that. The other one I won't bore you with, but basically this uh, wire for the uh, thumb throttle is a lot thinner. That will be a walk in the park. Um, in fact, I'll just get that done very quickly off camera. So I've just mocked this up. Um, now that I've cut the hole in the, um, the small sprocket large enough to go over the, um, the shaft, um, I'm just sort of 
trying it for alignment and I think I'm about there. I'm quite happy with that. I think the last bit of alignment I can do, I'll do on the frame itself just prior to actually um, welding it to the wheelbarrow. Um, and then that's, yeah, just spot weld the wheel to the, the uh, axle as well. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, so um, next step, I think, is a battery box. on the wheelbarrow and weld it on. Okay, so fast forward about a half hour, and what I've done is I've just, obviously I've put the battery in, screwed it in, um, got some wing nuts that's easy to remove, um, screwed the com uh, speed controller in, blah blah blah, uh, and what I've done also is I've had a go at this wire, uh, the wiring up this switch, this is a bit of a temporary measure, um, more on that in a minute. Um, but essentially what I, what it does is the wire the, the output for the uh, to the motor is intercepted now it doesn't go straight to the motor it goes basically up the um, up the handle here to the uh, to the switch and then back from the switch and then to the motor so it's sort of intercepted by this switch and then this switch is this clever little thing that spins uh, or switches the polarity over. Um, I've got a bit of a test wire here actually, just because I wasn't sure quite how to wire it up. It's not that clear on the instructions. Well, there wasn't any instructions. Um, but anyway, it's working, I think. We're going to test it. Um, what else have I done? Well, I've just tidied up the wire and I've shortened a lot of the wires. And that's it, really. Um, yeah, so should we give it a go?
Not so sure about the driving skills. <laughs>